everyone, welcome once again to my channel. Um, I have been wrecking my brain trying to figure out what um, new videos to make and for some reason I just hadn't been able to think of anything. But what I'm going to talk about today is the pros and cons of going to a small school versus a large university. So I don't know if you want to call it pros and cons or just a comparison of the two types of school. Um, my freshman year I attended a school that is fairly small, about 6,000 um, students. I think of that there were like over a thousand that were uh, grad students, but it was a college so there were very few grad progr like graduate programs. So most people were undergrads and from that one year there I can definitely tell you a ton of pros and cons of attending a small school. Okay, so the first thing that I noticed as the year went on and also at the end of my freshman year was you know everyone. Like, you know everyone in your class for sure. There is not one person that by the end of your freshman year you will not have met at least once. And that is just a fact. And you see people that you see at parties, in your classes, at the dining hall, just walk around. Like, you will see people and 90% of the time you'll be like, oh, I know them. When you know everyone or you feel like you know everyone, it can sometimes feel a little bit like high school because unless you went to a ginormous high school, you knew pretty much everyone in your class and you'd been with them for the whole four years, maybe even longer. So that could be a deterrent from going to a small school for some people. Also, it's easy to get involved. There's a ton of things that you can do, and because there's just less people, it's not as, it feels like it's not as competitive or just not as crowded um, to be able to join things, to start up new things. But the bad thing about it is that there's a low turnout for things a lot of the time. And I found this to be so true my freshman year because the student body of people who are like full time undergrads, let's say it was like a total of 5,000 people and then each class is like 1100 so I mean what are the chances that even a hundred people are gonna show up to something very few so I was part of a few clubs and they were very very small there would be like 10 people and so it's not you know there's just not as much commitment from people sometimes and there's not as big of a turnout for events which does tend to happen just because of the sheer size of the school the next thing is contingent upon location, but it does seem to me that small schools have a more homogeneous sort of um, pool of students in terms of their values or their backgrounds, and so it feels like there isn't as much diversity as there would be in large universities where there's tons of different kinds of people. So. If what you want is to be surrounded with people that like share the same things that you do, etc., this could be really nice. And it would be a chance to be able to network with people that feel the same way as you, whether it be like political views or just being liberal like as a campus or being more conservative or being more geared towards like engineering or more geared towards like the humanities. Next is something that I really enjoyed about going to a small college, and it was the small sizes for classes. Um, I really appreciate it that, first of all, professors taught all the classes, even like the 101 level classes, like 101 like microeconomics or macroeconomics, which is a 121 course, or like US government. At some other schools, First of all, those classes have like 100, 200, 300 kids. At a small school, I think the most you're going to find in one classroom is like less than 50 people, like 40 or so, like 30, 35, 40 at the most, which is really nice because it makes your courses like a lot more interactive and you know your professor and they know your name and so that's really nice. The bad part about this, which is actually not bad at all, but it was just a little thing that I had, was they count attendance, which is so annoying to me because I was like, I don't want to go. But at the end of the day, it's actually a good thing that they count attendance because it, it forces you or it encourages you to be a better student. You freaking show up to class. You're paying money for this, you know? So small class sizes, so good. Such a perk that you will not find at a university that has just a ton of people and a ton of students because there's just no way. Like, there's going to be giant lecture halls with, like, hundreds of people, whereas in a small school, you're way less likely to 
find yourself in that kind of situation. There is a lot more TAs in large universities or teaching assistants um, in large universities that there are at smaller schools. So all of my classes and all of my friends' classes um, at Ithaca College were taught by professors. Um, there was one like lab for French that was taught by like a TA, but I think it was even like I don't even think it was like required. <laughs> I think attendance was like five percent of the grade because I went once. It was an eight a.m. class. Like, do you blame me? If you're in a college town and there's a smaller school and a big university, you're going to feel like the big university owns the place. Like, no joke. So, for example, Ithaca College is in Ithaca, New York, and so is Cornell University. So Cornell is a lot bigger and more well-known and whatever, but just in terms of size, it's bigger. So Cornell students, with their ID, could get rides to and from anywhere on campus for free. I think it was just like their freshman year or something, but either way, Ithaca College students freaking had to pay for the bus every single time. So this is one of those things where it feels like the big university has like the upper hand um, because maybe they contribute more to the town or something. I don't really know what it's based on, but it could be a big perk of going to a larger university than a small college. Another thing that is again, contingent upon location, um, but also has to do with professors is I think that larger universities, especially in well-known cities, just attract faculty and professors that are kind of world famous, whereas um, smaller colleges still have very intelligent and very capable and really well-prepared professors, but there just has to be a difference in the kind of um, people that are hired for these schools because the people that are the most well-known in a field are going to be more likely to work at a really well-known like large institution than at a small private school but your education at the end of the day is what you make of it so you could have a professor that's in like the top one percent of their field but if you're not gonna pay attention then who cares you know you could have a professor that is doing really really well in your field but just isn't world famous like I've been saying and be getting an even better education because you're just paying attention and asking questions and meeting them for office hours and because it's a smaller school you have the opportunity to do office hours and things like that that you may not have at a huge university just because what are the chances of you getting a whole hour of a professor's time when you have to share that with 200 other students, whereas if you're at a small school, your chances are way higher if you're only sharing your professor with 30 other people. Something else that is true, regardless of how much people at small schools refuse to acknowledge, is that there is more school spirit at larger universities. You can see this just by how packed football games are, or just in general, uh, sports games are, and sports events, there's just more people there. And there's more people showing their support for their school, and there's more people just dressed head-to-toe school colors. That's just how it is. It's a bigger university, there's more people, means there's more fans. Smaller schools, sometimes you just don't feel like school pride is as prevalent, but you can always find that group of people who are crazy about the school and will show so much pride. It's just not as common as at a large university, and that is a fact of life. Then the last thing is something that, honestly, like, I'm not going to lie to you, you should take into consideration depending on the person, the type of person that you are. So to some people this won't matter at all, but to some other people it can even be the determining factor for deciding where to go specifically once they have like all their acceptance letters and stuff. So while I don't think that you should choose a school based on the social aspect, and definitely not based off just party life, I think that it can be part of your list of reasons for choosing one place over the other, honestly. Because if you're a very social person, you are not going to be happy at a school where there's just no events, no like nightlife, no city life, no party life in general, nothing. You're just going to be like, what? <laughs> the smaller schools sometimes don't have the kind of Greek life that larger universities do, and Greek life is a big part of um, the party scene at a school. Um, it, could, it could also be because 
parties are a little more exclusive like I have a friend that goes to a small university university here in my state and she says the same thing she says the student body is already so small and people literally have their small groups and they do their own gatherings together which you know go ahead do your thing but for us other people that don't have like a tight group where am I supposed to go hang out on Friday nights so I totally get that because that happens you know, uh, especially like your freshman year, the amount of like options for partying is going to be more restricted at a small college than at a large university where people sometimes party like literally from Thursday to Monday. <laughs> and that's just how it is at some schools. Whereas at smaller, smaller colleges, you might find yourself on a Friday night at 7 p.m. like having no idea if there's anything going on and having to like really scour for a party and I've seen that happen and unfortunately I've been in that situation a couple of times and it makes you wish that you went to a bigger school so that is something to think about um, but there are easy fixes for that like going to colleges nearby but it's just not ideal so that's really the last thing um, hopefully it's not the most important thing and or a deal breaker for you because it's one of the more like superficial reasons for going somewhere but it's four years of your life and there's a lot of weekends in four years so maybe it is something to consider I hope this was helpful for you guys just let me know if I can help you out with anything else and if I missed anything do comment below and let me know